Absolutely. So let, let's talk a little bit more. You said about the foundation, and I, I think I think you started to talk about that uh, a little bit. So so when you talk about foundation, you're talking about like your your home life and, and business ethics and, and stuff like that. So th- tell us more about the, the foundation portion of the program that you guys have. Yeah. So here, here's a question I like to ask people. If I ask ever, like literally all four of us on this call, if I go, hey, guys, what's the most important thing in your life? Like, what's the most important thing in your life? Well, one of you is probably going to pop off and say, oh, my family. Right. And so the other three of us are going to get peer pressured and say, oh, our family. Right. Or, or, or hopefully we all say that anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? But we're all just going to say our family. And here's the reality. We're probably all lying. And here's why I'm going to say that. Our actions show different, meaning we're so involved, like with running a roofing company, because we're so fucking important, right? Because we have people's lives in our hands. But, you know, like if Mrs. Smith doesn't get her brown drip edge, like she's going to die. Like that's our mindset that we have as a roofing company owner, salesman, whoever. Like the world's going to end, the shit's bad. And so I'm going to start work at five, six o'clock in the morning. I'm going to finish at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And Well, my family should understand because, you know, I made really good money and I made, you know, forty three hundred dollars on Mrs. Smith's roof. So it's really important. And I have this God complex because I'm I'm a roofer. Mm -hmm. So I just I told you guys my my family is my most important thing. And I think because I am providing for them and I bought them some nice shit that that's what really matters to them. The truth is, is they want you to be present. And we get caught up that like we're we're present for Mrs. Smith because we don't want a shitty Google review, but we're not present for our family. And you mentioned it, Ty, when you walked in, when you you were talking about like all you wanted to do was fucking go home and like I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to deal with shit. Like dad's home and like everybody leave me alone. How fair is that, right? Because at some point, you know, like kids kids change, but at some point in their life, like all they want is for their dad to come home. And literally fucking give them 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. All your wife wants you to do is literally come home and give her 20 minutes. And we get so caught up in that shit. And and I've, I've proven it with myself. I know for a fact if I walk in and I'm present for the first 20 or 30 minutes that I'm home, I'm fucking present and my phone's down and nothing else matters besides my conversation with my wife. I have a great night. Mm-hmm. But I have a screw loose and I forget about that shit personally sometimes. And I walk in and I'm dealing with whatever and I'm emailing and I'll fucking get on Facebook and I'll get on TikTok, like all this shit. And like my wife's like, what about me? And then I go like, well, what about the nice shit that we bought? Because I do all this. Right. Mm-hmm. So the foundation has got to start at home. And so if I could do that and I could start leading at home, that's so, so important. Like none of the matter. Mm-hmm. Like if I go out and I do all these roofs and I make a million fucking dollars, what did it really matter? Because my home life sucked and I'm fighting with my wife and I'm fighting with my kids and they don't really give a shit about that anyway because he's an asshole. So what what did all this time and energy and money that we made matter at the end of the day because no one gets to enjoy it because we don't like to be around each other? Yeah. No. I, That's deep. I, it, I love it. And uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw you post uh, Ed Milet's new book that you got it and read it. Did you read uh, it in my let's book yet? Dude, Where I, I did. I, I had COVID and I ordered it and it got it delivered at my house. Like at two 30, mm-hmm. I had that fucker read from front to cover, like at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. I, I was all in. Yeah, man. All Where talking about like that, one, yeah. that, uh, the, the emotional home, um, crap. Uh, it's so good. Like most people live in their emotions, right? So if, I, if, if I'm insecure today, that's, that's my life. My life is insecure. But if I'm, if I'm living in, you know, happy, joyous and free emotionally, then I'm, I'm living a happy, joyous and free life is what I think that he was trying to say. If I remembered it correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. because it was such a no, nugget. I, wish I wrote it down. Um, on how exactly he explained that. And uh, I see myself that as soon as I wake up, I might wake up insecure right away and neurotic and emotional because there's some things that I know I got to deal with. And that's how I live my day. 
entire my entire day and it's like he talks about like waking up in a different mindset of of being happy joyous and free and i'm just saying he didn't use happy joyous and free but that's that's the three emotions i want to live in right you know what i mean that's no, and if i, I want to stay brother if i'm if i'm living in chaos at home mm. i'm gonna live in chaos when i'm at my office mm -hmm. right like and if i'm living in chaos at my office i'm gonna live that way at home too so i mean they go hand in hand <laughs> but to me like where do i wake up and start my day and that's that's at home so if i start my day in chaos it's going to end in fucking chaos more than likely absolutely and, and and it's it's a matter of really just being present and that's that's the foundation of it dude i mean because right i we all agree like i literally seen all three of you guys go like this when i said what's the most important thing to you and you said i said family and you go that's exactly what i was thinking right we all said that shit, but are you living your life in that way or are you just going along with it nope. because you think that's what the fuck's supposed to be the most important thing you heard someone say that no we're all lying to ourselves yeah. and each other when we say family is the most important thing because it's it's not the way that we've lived i mean for the, the record i wore a hogwarts shirt today for my <laughs> <laughs> so fuck you <laughs> if it was friday we'd give you a gold star bud good, gold star friday for air good job bud honestly i'm probably 50 50. some days i'm good at it and some days i'm not so good at, yeah. at being intentional consistency when I'm man it's that's a very hard thing to be consistent with with to make that deliberate you know intent to have that intentional time um, it's it's hard, man. Mm -hmm. It's hard because I can I can go yeah. home on a Monday and be like, yeah, I'm good at it, but then shit hits the fan on Tuesday, and I'm I'm dealing with shit while I'm pulling in the driveway, and yep. six hours after I get home, I'm still dealing with shit because everything went wrong today, you know. And it's yeah, it it's 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 crazy though the way that we live this, and I, I I hate to go throw it back to AA, but it's like we know in AA if we do these things every day, we're gonna stay sober, right? And, and somehow, some way, like we forget that day. And so we don't do it. And then some of us get lucky and we get, we get up the next day and we start over and you know, we're, we don't, we didn't drink or use in the meantime, but we see literally more people than not go out because they, they forgot to like do their day with AA or, or whatever. Right. And their recovery. And so they relapse and you do the same shit at home sometimes with your wife. But if you think about this, a normal person, Right. If they had like cancer and the doctor said, hey, you're going to fucking die. So I need you to come to this this meeting for one hour a day or I need you to do this for 20 minutes a day and put your phone down and be present. But it, and you had cancer, you would fucking do it every single day, regardless of, of whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. We're facing the same circumstances, but somehow we can't make that work in our head because you're going on 50 50 and I'm going. I was agreeing with you for a second. I was like, fuck, I'm probably like only 30, 70 is the truthful true <laughs> statement. But what's, what's wrong with this that we can't just do that every day. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. If yeah. we could just learn to shut it off, especially as soon as we pull in the driveway and I've done this already where I've sat in the driveway for 30 minutes. If there was a call I needed to return, I, uh, some text messages I needed to reply back to or emails and stuff. And I'll try to clean that up mm -hmm. before I walk in before I walk in the door, even on nights like tonight, like I, I was actually able to go home a little bit early and uh, our granddaughter and Mackenzie was there and Rocket was there and, and Jana and it was cool. So I worked out for 30 minutes. I asked Mackenzie if her and uh, Skylar were going to be there for a while and she said yes. So I worked out real quick and uh, went up. They were still sitting around the pool and I got in the pool and they're all like, because that's that's kind of unusual because if I get home on a normal work day, it's kind of sometimes it's pretty late, but I try to sneak home throughout the middle of the day because Mackenzie and Skylar come over every other day. So I try to sneak home around lunchtime and, and get that intentional time in so I can see Skylar, our grandchild and, and Mackenzie, because now her and Chris have their own house and stuff. So they're not living at the house anymore and haven't for a while. And I miss them dearly. Early and um you know and rocket and he's such a good goddamn kid mm -hmm. he him and jana must have been talking the other day um about something and and rocket he's 13 years old and what's cool is is like i'm still his hero mm -hmm. now my oldest kid who's 27 years old thinks i'm a fucking piece of shit so our first child i fucked him up <clears throat> the second child we did a little better on but rocket's like 
I don't even know where he came from. Like, he, <laughs> like he's such a good goddamn kid, you know. Probably, not, probably not yours. Probably not, <laughs> you know. Um, but he's such a good kid, and now we got three grandkids that just love to see me. And it's like when I came to you, I was a loser, I was a liar, I was a drunk, and I was a thief. A thief. And today, I'm I'm a father. I'm a brother. I'm an uncle. I'm a grandfather. A fucking grandfather, dude. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, I didn't think I was going to make it past age 21 for real. I graduated from FCP, and that's Franklin County fucking prison. And that's no joke, dude. Like, I got my degree or my my high school diploma in jail. Like, my entire life, I fucked up from the beginning. Like, just – and today, it's like – like you were saying, like, I was that dude sitting in the corner in the back row in an AA meeting thinking, man, there's no way. I'm not like these people. There's no way. Like I'm I'm just I'm not I'm never gonna get it. I'm not like these people. I'm not worth it. Um, if they only knew who I really was and the things that I went through, but then when I, I just I kept coming back. I kept coming back and I kept coming back because that's what they told me to do. I kept coming and not to keep going back to the the whole AA thing, but it, it plays a big bit. I eat, breathe, and shit this thing. I have to. I have to. And those You know are- it's funny. I, I sat in the back of that room the first time I did. And I remember, or yeah, like it was maybe after like my second DUI or something. I don't know. And I remember sitting in the back of that room and I had a different thought. And I went, I'm supposed to be here. I'm not ready to stay. I'm not ready to stay. I'm going back out. But this is probably where I'm going to end up. And like, I knew it. Like I can literally put myself in that place, in that seat, in what room I was in, what meeting I was at. And I remember looking up and being like, this is where I belong. Just not yet. Mm-hmm. And I left that and I left that meeting and went straight to the bar. I think I drove Paul by the bar the other day. And I was like, that's the bar that I used to go to after I left AA when I had to get my card signed. And <laughs> yep. And, and that was exactly. And sure as shit, then uh, 10, almost 10 years later was when I got back and actually started doing the deal. But it took like another 10 years before that could before i could see that yeah that, i mean that's just crazy that that's the insanity mm-hmm. right that's the insanity that we all talk about 